Well, welcome back. It is still news up. Now to our next conversation, which borders around um, the democracy, strengthening democracy in Nigeria. Just as we're celebrating our 25 years of uninterrupted democracy, it's important that we uh, further have conversations on how this democracy can be strengthened. Many have argued that it's difficult to have um, uh, the current uh, beneficiaries of uh, this skewed form of democracy that we have begin to exercise or, or put in place the change that many Nigerians are calling, or calling for. And then the argument has been that um, the CSO should be the one that should propel and, and, and move the conversation for uh, a stronger democracy. So on the show today, we are looking at um, the role of CSOs partnering uh, the government to ensure people-oriented uh, policies. In the studios this morning is Oluwa Tosi, your auditor who is a policy expert. Uh, so good to have you on the show. So good to have you. And happy democracy day. Yeah, it's 25 years at a stretch. That's quite tremendous. commendable. Commendable. OK, so uh, what really comes to mind for you when, when, when we say we are enjoying the 25 years of uninterrupted uh, democracy? Is it um, something that you, you want to celebrate, or is it something that gives you, comes with mixed feelings for you? OK, so if we, when I was reviewing the presentation by the president, 16th president of Nigeria, said we've celebrated political democracy, but we've not yet attained economic democracy, in which means that democracy, in his own words, means that there's a liberty of thought, there's a liberty of um, different opinions. You can bring different views. There's, there's room for agreement and disagreement. And just like you mentioned um, by the previous American president, Roosevelt, it says there are different ways of going forward. There's only one way of standing still. So that's why we are celebrating political democracy. There's also a need for economic democracy. Now, let's even look at where did civil society organizations start in Nigeria? Before the um, independence, during the pre-colonial areas, we have the Nigerian Union of Students. We have the Rail Workers Union of Nigeria. In fact, in 1929, there was, it was a civil society organization that at the um, Abba Women riot. Also in 1947 to 1949, we also had the Egba Women tax riot, in which they even took a very bold stand to and even remove. To be like a, yeah, to yes, yes. Yeah. They even removed the Alaki of Egba land, which was on the throne. Now, it was during these democracy, um, these civil society agitations that brought about our independence. During our independence, during the time of independence, we have the Nigerian National Council for Nigeria and Cameroon. We have the Egbe Omo Odudua. We had the Arewa um, Forum that sprung up and there about. That shows that they played an active role. So, but that was during those times. In fact, during the time of the Civil War, we had the Red Cross Society that came around and the Catholic Mission Relief um, that came around to be able to maintain orderliness within a coordinated forum. Now let's also come down a bit to the second to the Second Republic during the time of Shehu Shagari from 1979 to 1983. There were also there were also civil societies at that point in time. In fact, that was there was a global economic crisis that was caused as a result of energy and the monetary policies that were taken by the United States. There was a global recession. Um, global recession that led to the implementation of the structural adjustment program for Nigeria to run in 1975 and 1976. In fact, which was first, that was the first time we heard about the devaluation of the Naira when the World Bank came. So at that point in time, women could not vote prior to that time. It mm. was a civil society organization that came together and ensured that women were able to vote in the north. And prior to that time, it was only in the south we could have women vote. So let's come down a bit further. During the time of the um, General Ibrahim Babangida, um, General Sani Abacha, and Abdul Salam. So we also have civil, we, we saw more activities by civil society organizations. We had the, um, the Civil Liberties Organization, which was founded by Uwanko and Odisa um, Akabuba. We also had the Constitution, Constitutional Rights Forum, and we also have the um, Committee for Rights of Democracy. We also had the um, Campaign for Democracy, and we also had the NADECO, which is the National Democratic 
coalition. Coalition. These were put together by very strong men that the president mentioned yesterday, such as Beko Ransom Kuti, um, Alao A.K. Bashon. We also even have the Ududua People's Congress that was formed by um, Dr. Fred mm. Dikisio Tonfashio in 1994. Mm. This was originally a civil right. But now let's come down. In recent times, these institutions even migrated to form political parties back sure. at those point in time, which we have the left wing, which was the Social Democratic Party, and the National Council of Republican, which was the right wing of it. So they took a stand and advocated for a cause. There was no bit of bias. Now, even let's even look at the Duas People's Congress. After um, fashion went into exile, it was confined. We had the likes of Ghani Adams that not turned it from advocating for the justice of Nigeria into some people bringing in rituals Rituals and all those things that for whom and causing men. In fact, if you look at it critically, the indigenous people of Buafra, IPOB, is meant to be more or less like a social forum or a civil society of organization. But by the time you are not bringing terrorism into it, you are not allowing the government to be able to have a free course for them to even listen to you. Now, prior to that time, in the emergence of our democracy too, in 1998 to 1999, we have the um, National Transition Group, which after um, Abacha died in 1998, that brought about the democracy which we are celebrating 25 years. So it's also a civil society organization. So civil society organizations that play their role to ensure we get to where we are today. Some of them lost their lives. In fact, we lo- knew that someone like Antonia Nauru was sneaked out of Lagos through at, at during the odd hours of the night for him to go to Benin Republic before he joined the other people. In fact, they, only, they even have Nigerian chapters and international chapters. So that's to show that they are very active. If they are able to come together and bring their voice and be able to advocate, they could easily drive a reform. But if you look at recent times, the closest we could have to a civil society organization playing similar role like what they did in the past was during the NSAS protest. But they were not coordinated enough. They gave an open way for those that are against the government to penetrate and use their use them as a means. You know that some people are surely against the government. Why are staging a protest, some people are going into other stores, vandalizing and creating memes. Just like I said, Ududua's People's Congress, OPC, was not established to be carrying guns here and then. In fact, their founder, Fashion, was a doctor trained okay. in Scotland. He went abroad, he was, he was doing his private practice, and he was even part of the Nadeco Forum that was fighting against the Miss M that happened in June 1993. So, yeah. civil societies have a role but in recent times, we've seen that they've been a bit of a compromise from what they should really be fighting so for. So what, 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 what do you think has brought about that compromise? Because um, of all the CSOs you've mentioned so far, when you look at our current day democracy, uh, our key players within our current day democracy are all players within the CSOs mm. of the past. Could that be the reason why there seem to be like a downturn in CSO activities in Nigeria? Because uh, we have seen that um, they have all risen to power right now. Nobody is, is, is propelling that um, civil society uh, organization fight anymore. Okay, so let's even look for, let's look at 2012 when we had the likes of Adam Doshomole at that point. And as soon as Adam Doshomole got into the aim of power and some of these people that were initially fighting for democracy, rather than them going to represent the masses, it was a bit, we didn't know whether they were actually representing the masses or they were not representing the masses. So um, what we'll say is that some of these people, by the time, the fears they have is that, okay, you come and say you're fighting for the people. By the time you enter into closed doors meetings with the president or those that are the uh, aim of affairs or those that are in the rightful place to take those decisions, we don't know the results. So rather than you come out and tell us, okay, this is the verdict, this is what we are able to do, we see that there is a dwindle, and nobody is ready to risk his life. Now, for those that came out during the NSAS protest that they lost their lives, nothing was done. Nothing was even done to commence. The worst we could have it at that point in time, even though some people lost their lives, but they were sentenced to prison when we have the likes of Danny Fahimi, the likes of Femi Fala not going to advocate for those people. In fact, the um, chief police of Obasanjo was even sentenced to prison. It was a civil society organization that rose up and they said that, oh, rather than even sentence, 40 of them were sentenced to death 
that they should even be, be killed. It was a um, civil society organization that rose up and ensured that, okay, it was jail time, and as soon as things got the way, they were brought out of those coffers of the government. So what I think is that there is a misplacement of priority. Some of these civil organizations are not being formed by the right rationales again, or even though they have the rationales, by the time they get to represent the people, um, the motives or the language begins to change. In fact, the National Consultative Forum was formed by three civil society organizations, Nigerian Medical Association, National Association of Nigerian Students, and Nigerian Bar Association, founded by Alaoike Bashan. But now, Nigerian NANS that we still have, I don't, when I was doing my time in school, I don't even know what NANS did at all, right? No, 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 sorry, <laughs> I, I, I may have to interject. I and mean, that's, it's a good place. I was hoping you would take the conversation in that route. Because uh, when you look at what happens in the universities, because I feel that um, if we're talking about entrenching democracy in Nigeria, we should be looking at getting our students uh, involved and interested at that level. But what you find in our universities is a situation where vice chancellors clamp down on student union government. As a matter of fact, in some universities, they say they don't have student union government anymore. They just have student union. You take away the government. Now, what is, uh, because I you know, incidentally, the CSO are more focused on Abuja, you know, where the big money is, where the donors put in a lot of money. Yeah. So what are the CEOs, the CSOs doing to ensure that democracy or the tenets of democracy are entrenched even in the high institutions of learning? So it, it still comes about the independence, when there is no clear-cut independence. I was, uh, I, during my days what, in the What do you mean independence? So, your donors, mm. those that are majorly supporting and providing those financial support for you to even establish as an NGO, um, are telling you to fight for a particular cause. And you just need to follow that particular cause. Or by the time you get into the coffers where you need to negotiate or take decisions on behalf of those you are representing, you are being offered something that makes you to go back. So we saw that. Let's look at the classical example. The last. Um, last week where we had the labor and shut down the national grid and everything was in a state of commerce. Of course, we know it's more or less like um, treason or felony. But immediately after that incident, the charm person of, the key person of Nigerian Labor's Congress left to attend the International Labor's Conference, which I I'm not see. saying is bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you should attend. But you said after one week, you are going to come back and present such case. So, we are not seeing that after one week, nothing is being done. Yeah, we are still waiting for the noise of the president, and the president has said that, oh, he's going to do something on the minimum wage. We saw the way the national anthem was, the revised, um, the revised national anthem was brought back within a space of 48 hours, and we had it passed into law. Minimum wage that is of core necessity to the people is not following that same pace. I know several consultations were where would have been done. In fact, some governors are not even comfortable with paying the 62,000. Some are negotiating below. So what we have is that we are putting more pressure on those, on those that will have naturally advocated, either through direct pressure or indirect pressure. When I mean direct pressure, threat to life, um, which we've seen in previous, it was also there. In fact, it was even worse under the military regime. But these people stood their ground. They had the firm belief that they were fighting for something. And they could not, they could not go to the other side and compromise because their members would say, "Why will you go there and receive that thing?" No, 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 no. This is what you are fighting for. Let us hold on to our strong belief or indirect pressure that they not ensure that they bring those people into office, right? So when I when I was playing unionism in school, uh, it it took. I need to follow a particular trend. There are some godfathers. There are some people that. And those people were saying that, no, when you are coming to fight for it, you cannot come and fight for a just cause. So it takes someone that have a clear independence of mind um, for you to do it. But let's even look at it. For you to even operate as a civil society organization, you need to have a lot of people. You need to have mass followership. How many people are willing to lose their job? In fact, some companies do not even support unionism. Again, so once you are entering the company, you say there is no union. So if you are having a case whereby organizations, private organizations, mm. are not even supporting some in case of advocating, I know where they are coming from. That people might want to come against to, to the so, management. So, so this is sounding like a dead hand for the fight for uh, demand for good governance, mm. demand for accountability. If this is what uh, CSOs have all been relegated to, so who does the fighting? Who does the who, who, who speaks for for the common man out there right now? So it's, it's quite difficult. Uh, it's quite difficult for CSOs to really have their hold 
because one, they, they, think, they think that, oh, these people are of superior authority and you're not going to, they're not going to do anything about it. Also, there's also this risk of the other people with other political interests using it to go and cause me elsewhere and say that, okay, we know that during the answers they were staged at a particular place, but some people were destroying everything here and there. So, but what can be done? How can CSOs break away from this liberty? Is what exactly is the right way to go about this? So, for example, I look at the case of IPOP. You shouldn't just go about killing the military people. You didn't need to even carry any arms at all. We are fighting for a true state of federalism, or in the case of where there is no federalism, find a way to leave the country. Let's look at USSR. USSR was made up of so many com countries before, and everybody found their ways and found their way to be able to do it. What is the right? Should you, can you build a strong base that you can even hold your House of Representatives accountable? Let's go to leave Abuja. Let us not fight with Abuja. Let's even hold our councillors, our local government representatives, our House of Representatives. Let's hold our senators accountable. What can they even do in our local? Then from there, from local, like we say, all politics is local. You need to come to the grassroots. The problem, one of the problems the CSOs we have now, I wake up every morning, set up or write something to the president. In fact, I might not even get to the ears of the president because the president says, oh, set up is one organization down there. But when this scene at the grassroots, are we able to hold your representatives in the realm of affairs? You'll be able to see a bit of more structure. So the, the last question from my end here. Um, do you think the way CSOs are funded should be reviewed? Critically reviewed critically review to ensure that there is this clear independence. So those people that even founded CSOs before, they were independent. So there was no even room for being biased. So the moment you, you say you're an NGO or a civil society organization and you're reaching out to me for funding, then there's an issue. Because at that point in time, there's no independence of mind, mm. right? So one of the issues I even broke about the Odudua's People's Congress was like when um, Frederick the Sierra fashion went to meet Obasanjo and Jan, told him, that, okay, these are the things that we want. And Ghani Adam said that, oh, you've collected money. And Frederick Fashion said, I didn't collect any money. In fact, those people, they were, they were living themselves. They were men themselves. They had their own economy. They could live for themselves. But they felt that, oh, there's a need for me to fight. So now, they, what keeps happening is that they keep playing the game of hunger. Let's look at the national, the election, election setting of Nigeria. You see, nothing, nothing is being done now, right? Everybody has kept their mouth closed. Once it's one year to election, you start seeing people sharing bag of rice, sharing things, many other things that cannot even hold you for a long period of time. And you think that, oh, once you're able to provide you that support, you'll be able to raise your voice and everybody will be able to vote for this particular person mm -hmm. without even critically examining. Is one year in office, have you hold your house of representative accountable? Mm -hmm. So you need to start from a very yes. local base and critically review the source of funding to ensure that there's clear independence. I think independence is one of the major issues that we are facing that we are not making these people to be able to stand up. Fair. You know, Tosi, if we, if we allow, we can, we can go through this for the next uh, five hours with you. Yeah. But unfortunately, this is about how much time would allow us to take. Yeah, but then, uh, takeaways, takeaways right now is the fact that uh, we should make our advocacies local. Local. Let's make our advocacies local. It's yeah. a good place to start. Thank you so very much, uh, Tosi, our Ladeta, our policy experts, as he takes us through. You uh, were schooling us on history this morning. Quite some historical uh, perspective. Yeah, he did. Coming I mean... from you this morning. <laughs> but then, thank you very much uh, for being on the show, Tosi. Thank yeah, thank you. you.